welcome to the Christmas episode of 50's Thoughts. Say, do you remember the movie Scrooged? Good. Remember how good Bill Murray was in that film? Excellent. Well, lightning doesn't strike twice when it probably should have. I mean, today we have Netflix, who has worked with Daredevil, Jessica Jones, House of Cards, and Orange is the New Black, working with Bill Murray, who has done What About Bob, Ghostbusters, Scrooge, Caddyshack, Stripes, and Groundhog's Day, teaming up to do a Christmas special. And you'd think that this would be good, right? Well, do you want to see how bad this thing actually is? Good! Then let's take a look at A Very Murray Christmas. We open with Bill Murray looking out of his window while his personal musician plays a tune that matches Bill Murray's mood. Like most people do. Right, Charles? I'm mood, I'm the need, I'm the die, I'm the need, I'm the die, I'm the need, I'm the die. Hmm. Thought most people had one. Oh well. He sings about how he has the Christmas blues, and I'm sorry, but Bill Murray's singing isn't the best thing to start the special off with. I get it, he's older, but it just doesn't sound that good, and when it takes up the first three minutes... Yeah... So after his song, he gets a call which his butler picks up. Okay, maybe not everyone has a butler, but I am working on game one for Christmas. Apparently his producers called to let him know that they are outside, and he doesn't take this too well. Merry Christmas. I'm not here. Mr. Murray Sweet. I'm already dead. Yes, yes, of course, of course. The answer is no. Who is it? Your producers, Mr. Murray, they are outside. They've heard your beautiful voice, sir. God hates me. You know, I get the feeling that he watched Garfield before this. And maybe he's just regretting ever taking up that role. If that's the case, I really don't blame him for feeling this way. We then see that his producers are Amy Poehler and producer number two, and we learn that the reason why he is so down is that New York has been shut down due to the weather conditions and none of his guests were able to show up. Therefore, his fear gets the best of him, and he lashes out at his producers. I need you to produce! Well, that confirms it. He did watch Garfield. I'm so sorry for you, Bill Murray. They get Murray ready to go on set, and they run into Michael Cera, who really doesn't help the situation. Bill Murray escapes Scott Pilgrim's speech, and the producers show that they know how to copy and paste. No, seriously, these reaction shots that they are going to have because the guests couldn't show up were taken from last year's Golden Globes. I don't know if you guys know, but that's copyright infringement. That's plagiarism. Plagiarism? Copyright infringement? That's illegal! You could get sued for it! Now, I know you probably have enough money to kind of cover all that, but seriously, think about the children who are watching a TV MA special. Think about the message that you're sending to them. And also, that kind of makes you think, why are they watching a TV MA special? Anyways, Bill Murray heads on stage and we get another musical number. But the musical number is stopped when Bill Murray says that he just can't do this. While he's trying to run out of the building, we run into cameo number three, Chris Rock. When seeing him, he feels so much better since now he actually has a guest for his show. Chris says that there is no way in hell that he will be a part of this. So what does Bill Murray do? He holds him hostage. First copyright infringement, now kidnapping? What next? Are you guys gonna murder Miley Cyrus? Actually, that's not that bad of an idea. We then get another musical rendition, which is god awful, and first off, Chris Rock is not a singer. Both of them look ridiculous in this scene, and it doesn't help that Chris Rock looks like he is scared for his life. You know what would have been better for this scene? If instead, we didn't have any kidnapping, first off, and second off, we had Chris Rock and Bill Murray doing what they know best, comedy. Having some sort of improvised comedy between the two for two to five minutes would have been more interesting and would have picked up this damn mood. 
but thank God that the power goes out to stop the number and to let Chris Rock escape. But with the power out, that means that Bill Murray's Christmas special is cancelled. Well, clearly it isn't since we still have 39 and a half minutes left in this special. So I guess let's see where the pacing goes from here. Bill heads to the bar with his musician and we get yet another musical number. You guys know that you can do a Christmas special without a musical number, right? Oh wait! You already did! What I will admit is that Bill Murray's singing is better in this duet than in the previous two musical numbers. But when they hear the cooks getting a little boisterous, him and his duet partner go to check on what's going on. Bill Murray gives some inspiration to these saddened chefs and gets the food out to the people. He then stops when he sees that Bride has been stuck here in the hotel with him and he learns that he isn't the only one who's having a shitty holiday. He then tries to cheer her up, but it goes as well as someone trying to cheer up Bill Murray in this film. And back to another musical number. Alright, to be honest, this one isn't that bad. Sure, we have to put up with some comedy at the beginning, which really doesn't work. But at least it has a faster tempo, is more upbeat, and gets everyone in the room involved in the song. So, props to you for doing that, I guess. I mean, it took you half of the special to kind of get there, but still good job. After the song, Bill runs into the bride's husband and tries to get him to cheer up the bride. But then Maya Rudolph just kind of walks in and takes his place. Well then, hello pointless cameo! After she gives him her drink, she then walks over to the musician and starts, you guessed it, another depressing musical number! Alright, two things. One. How the hell did she get here? Number two, if she was here the whole time and could sing, kind of, then what was the point of capturing Chris Rock and making him do a musical number? Number one, you could have avoided the whole capturing Chris Rock thing, and that would have saved a big problem with this movie. And number two, you could have actually had the musical number with Maya Rudolph and have it so, oh, when Bill Murray is kind of upset that there is no guests around to be on this show, she could pull him back and say, hey, let's do a duet. Pull them in for the duet and therefore we get something that sounds better and actually is better than what we got with Chris Rock. And it would have picked up the mood a little bit more since I cannot stress enough how bad the mood of this movie is. After that, the wife and husband get to hear Bill's philosophy about love, which can be summarized to sing a love song because you mean it. Or in other words, let's add more filler to this movie by adding another song to the track list. I'm just going to end up fast forwarding this. Anyways, Bill unofficially weds the two and since it's midnight, that means that it's officially Christmas Day! And you know what that means, boys and girls? We get another fucking song! After that, Bill Murray has a little bit too much to drink and then he falls into a dream with... You know what? I'm gonna have you say it this time. Well, at least I know what this episode's drinking game is. And you know how they try to make this musical number different? They add Miley Cyrus and George Clooney. Hold on, I'm gonna go grab some eggnog and hopefully by the time I do this, the whole song will be over. Hello, Paul. It's nice to see you. I thought I'd make a martini or two. This is the place to do it. I forgot. I hate eggnog. Ugh. So, what were we doing again? Oh, yeah. Well, I guess I can change my drink. Bill Murray finally wakes up after three musical numbers in a row and they jump straight into We Wish You a Merry Christmas. And that was a Merry Christmas. So, what exactly went wrong here? 
First of all, this is way too long. This could have easily been cut down to at least 30 minutes. And if they were to cut any songs from this, I'd say cut all the ones in the first half, except for the upbeat one that I kind of liked earlier. I know I skipped like the last three or four musical numbers, but to be honest, as much as I hate Miley Cyrus, her numbers were way better compared to the other ones at the beginning. Also, this movie doesn't have that Christmas cheer that it should have. Sure, it has Christmas songs in it, but besides that, it's more of a Christmas bore than anything else. If they would have made this the way that it was advertised, a variety show hosted by Bill Murray, then I think this could have gone very well. But the whole story of the special is completely and utterly pointless and just depressing for no reason. We don't really see a change in Bill Murray. He's pretty gloomy from the start, and then when he starts drinking, he lands up a bit, but when he wakes up, he's still pretty dark and gloomy. Now, like I said, there's a couple of musical numbers that work, but besides that, none of it works. It had potential to work, but like I said, it feels like no one even wanted to try to make this good. The married couple could have been interesting if they weren't used just for a transition into a musical number. The cameos are the same way. Maya Rudolph, Amy Poehler, and Chris Rock should have all been used for comedy, not songs or transitions into songs. Overall, this is a 2 out of 5 star movie. It's tolerable, but it will not be coming a Christmas classic anytime soon. Maybe they'll have to update Zombieland now, so instead of Bill Murray saying this... So do you have any regrets? <laughs> Garfield, maybe? They'll change it to this. So do you have any regrets? <laughs> Garfield, maybe? And a Murray Christmas. But not Space Jam or Osmosis Jones. I still kind of like those. Well, maybe not my part in Osmosis Jones, but you get what I mean. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for an incredible first season, and thank you so much for joining me this Christmas on 50 Slots. I really appreciate you guys checking out this video, especially on a holiday like this, and everyone here at 5150 Nighthawk Go 2, we want to thank you, and we want to say Merry Christmas to you, Happy Hanukkah to you, Happy Kwanzaa to you, or if you don't celebrate any of those holidays, just have a happy end of your year, and we will see you guys next year. But, I gotta think of something that will kind of pick me up from these past two reviews, since they've been kind of depressing. So, what is the most uplifting thing that I can think of? Okay.